Calipari really invoked uh, you know decades of Kentucky coaching history there. He said he talked to Joe Hall. I talked to Tubby Smith, Eddie Sutton, Rick Pitino. I do want to ask you uh, about uh, one of those talks because you had a chance as well to talk to Eddie Sutton, former coach there at Kentucky. Uh, what did uh, Coach Sutton have to say about what he said to Calipari? Well, I, I spoke with Coach Sutton yesterday, and it's no secret it didn't end well when he was there. He had his own personal problems and it ended in Kentucky's shame, but then he recaptured his own career when he went to my alma mater at Oklahoma State, his alma mater at Oklahoma State. And, and what he made very clear to, to uh, Coach Calipari is that Kentucky is a great place and they afford you so many opportunities to be great and 98% of those fans are only there to support you and make sure that you can get any bit of support that you could possibly need. So the, the, the only problem is the 2% that follow the program with such incredible fervor that they expect nothing less than a national championship or contending for a national championship every year. If you can handle that type of pressure, that type of adulation, uh, that type of intense atmosphere on a daily basis in terms of uh, attention to detail at practice, off the court activities, recruiting, and of course winning games, you can handle Kentucky. But uh, I think John Calpler was exceptionally intelligent in his desire to pick up the phone and call all of these different men. So he knew what he was getting into because who would better know than the guys who had sat in that chair previous to him. Really, since Adolph Rupp, perhaps uh, the, the, the program really next hit a height perhaps comparable uh, under Rick Pitino. Right. Now Calipari mentioned as well, he had spoken to Coach Pitino. And now, uh, as the focus of the Pitino and Calipari, the perceived rivalry, really now focuses on the bluegrass. Here we have Louisville and, and here we have Lexington. I wonder, what does this now do? do to Patino v. Calipari? I think it makes it a rivalry. I don't think it was a rivalry in anything other than two Italian men who are very good coaches because, in truth, Calipari has been Patino light. You know, yes, he got to the Final Four, but he did it at UMass. Patino did it at Kentucky three times, did it at, at Providence when he was in the Big East. Yes, he went to the NBA, but he did it without any sort of success, and he did it with the Nets, not the Knicks, a la Patino. Uh, whether the two men like each other or not, now all of a sudden becomes front and center news because they may be recruiting against each other on a day-to-day -day basis, and that one time a year in which they meet, whether it's at Rupp Arena or at Freedom Hall or the new Louisville Arena, uh, now suddenly this becomes a rivalry. Remember, Calipari did not see success at Memphis until Louisville left Conference USA and went to the Big East. So there is a, a perceived rivalry that now will become a rivalry. And this is kind of interesting. I was uh, calling a Louisville game last year, and Rick Pitino said to me, you know when Kentucky is going to get a new arena? When they walk into our new arena and say, all right, you see this building? We have to top that. And that's the day that Rupp Arena gets torn down. They build a new one. So now the rivalry truly is renewed in the bluegrass. As long as Rick Pitino stays in the bluegrass, That's perhaps true. there's thoughts he might uh, be headed down Tucson way to take over the vacancy there at Arizona. I also want to get again, we've heard a lot about the recruits, the recruits who may follow Calipari now from Memphis to Kentucky, the ones that can, the ones that may be staying behind or going elsewhere. What do you know? Okay, well, here's, here's the basic premise. Xavier Henry is signed with Memphis but can get out of his letter of uh, intent because of a clause in there that says if John Calipari is not the head coach, he can get out. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins never signed, simply orally committed. There's the assumption that they'll both go with him and possibly John Wall, the premier point guard in the country who visited Duke this past weekend, could also attend Kentucky. Perfect scenario for Kentucky? Obviously, all three go. Yeah. And Patrick Patterson, Jody Meek stay. If that happens, this is a top five team next year, a team that will contend for a national championship. I should point out that there's a couple of big ifs out there. First, the top recruit for Kentucky this year was a kid named Daniel Orton. Orton's brother played at Oklahoma State. There is the thought that or Orton could also ask out of his letter of intent because DeMarcus Cousins may come, because Patrick Patterson may stay. That could change their recruiting a little bit. Also, the assumption is Xavier Henry absolutely goes to Kentucky. Kentucky. But I would, I would do a Lee Corso and say not so fast. He only attended Memphis because his brother is also on Memphis's team sitting out as a redshirt coming back from playing professional baseball. Xavier Henry, Xavier Henry's mom and dad both played at Kansas and it was a very close race in which he picked Memphis over Kansas. This completely reopens his recruitment and if Jody Meeks were to stay at Kentucky an additional year considering you look at Kansas and they are a wing away from being a national championship contender, he could rethink the process and end up at Kansas. So it's no locked up cinch that they all go to Kentucky and it, it's a bluegrass miracle and they win a national championship next year. Is it, is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? Probably not. They will get somewhere in the middle of getting everybody and not getting anyone.